The House of Representatives has passed for second reading a bill seeking to allow independent candidacy in Nigerian elections. If the bill is passed, it will be legal for independent candidates to vie for any elective office in the country without using any political party platform. The Chief Whip, Mr. Mohamed Mongono, who sponsored the bill, said independent candidacy would create a level playing field for all Nigerians who want to contribute their quota to national and local development. And joining us to discuss this is legal practitioner, is Chukuma Okenwa, convener, you decide via phone. Good evening, Chukuma, and thank you for joining us. Yeah, good evening. And how are you doing this evening? Thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you so much. Pleasure here. All right. Now, is Nigeria ripe for independent candidacy? Uh, at the moment, I consider it uh, untimely for us to be talking about uh, independent candidacy. Why? Why do you say uh, that? It would have been more advisable to focus on other forms of electoral reforms, considering the fact that even in Senate climes, uh, where you have instances and such platforms, independent candidates over the time do not win elections. Uh, because, of course, uh, though independent candidacy gives more room for uh, collaboration amongst people that share uh, similar philosophy without party interference, uh, but then looking at it and how strong uh, and imposing uh, the popular parties can actually be using the structure they have on ground. Um, I'm just wondering what it's going to look like and what their chances would actually be. And if this actually is not a distraction from the conversations we should be having now about some of the due electoral reforms to ensure that first, people imagine from the major political parties, uh, those with credible records, those that have that uh, uh, ability to transform the nation, looking at their track record. Now, okay, well, Chukuma, you are the convener, you decide. Don't you think, I mean, if this is passed into law, if the bill is passed into law, it will afford people your likes and all the Nigerians who could give us qualitative representation to come on board in the playing field to take our nation to the place we all desire for it to be. Don't you see that happening? Well, looking at the last election, judging from the last election, we have a proliferation of political parties here and there, pockets of political parties and people trying to express themselves. What I should be thinking of is something that should be able to harmonize the effort of younger persons. Now, the ideal thing there is that when we have the needed electoral reform, perhaps major candidates from on independent platforms would have opportunity of collaborating, coming together. We saw what happened when the likes of uh, uh, Mo Alo, uh, uh, Fela, and uh, Showere was thinking of coming together, but for the limitations placed on them by their party structure. They could not do that. So the only beauty about independent candidates is that people are free to form alliances without the limitations from the political parties. But beyond that, I think we are not really right for that as a country, because put together, when you look at the major political parties, they will still play their pranks, and then you know it will still be like the, the usual hijack we see. So I think we should be able to focus more on critical issues of electoral reforms at the moment. Now, during the First Republic, the 1963 Constitution allowed for independent candidates to contest elections. And even the Westminster parliamentary system of government we had then even allowed independent candidates. What are the possible mitigating factors to wait now, as in, in your own um, opinion? Okay, well, part of the things and, and major challenges we'll be having at the particular moment is when you compare now uh, the First Republic with the First Republic, yeah. There is a great a whole lot of differences. We have politicians and political structures, more desperate. And even the, at the moment, like the major political parties, there is nothing anyone could actually place hand on that these are the ideologies. These are the people that these part, political parties are meant for. It's all about the, the power mongering, it's all about power grabs. And it has not helped our democracy. So when you compare them where people were bringing out themselves for service, and then this particular time where you have like political party structures so corrupt with their agenda to keep back the nation from where we are. It's really a problem. Now, why independent ca candidates will, you know, raise up the bar in conversations, you know, about independent patriots contributing their quota to the national discourse. However, when you look at it, judging from what happened in the last election, where you also have several other parties trying to like come together, do their thing you know, based on the fact to accommodate Nigerians that have the interest of the nation. 
you see how the major political parties equally, you know, took the whole show, took over the airspace. So I think focusing more on electoral reforms, you know, like things like electronic voting, you understand, you know, restructuring the whole electoral process will really help. Now, okay, well, what would you say uh, our presidential system of government, which our constituent adopted, um, allows for, for the practice of independent candidacy? And is it in tandem with the novel presidential system of government we have in place right now? Yeah, sure. Okay. I would say that because, of course, when we allow that, like typically in Nigeria, we model after our great nations like the U.S. So if, uh, like, as the U.S. Uh, uh, constitution supports uh, independent candidacy, it wouldn't also be wrong for us to co opt that. But then, beyond that, when we are talking about adopting and adapting conventions, you also look at your peculiarities. The elections there and over here is entirely different. Over there in the U.S. is a contest of ideas. But here it's more or less like strength. People flex muscles. You know, people look at who have, who have got the biggest money, who have got the media power and all of the rest. So all of these things are challenges that we even stop like individual capacities from emerging because how much will an independent candidate really need? And come to think about it, how many citizens can on their own fund the election of someone they believe can deliver, you know, the, the democratic dividend? You know, it's all about even when people fund the elections in the nation, they look at the benefit. If this man entered there tomorrow, am I going to be given the position of a minister? But when you look at it and it's just a fear that, oh, this person have the nation at heart, but then he, that he hasn't got the financial capacity. It becomes a limiting problem for the, for the person buying for that election. Now, let's take a look at our multi-party system of democracy, which we practice in Nigeria. Um, okay, well, what would you say that much has enabled us to um, bring about much development and growth and have qualitative representation, which we feel is in deficit right now in our politics? How would you begin to assess our multi-party system as, as a country? Yeah, let me first uh, commend INEC uh, for making plans to cut down on the parties uh, from over 90 to 27, uh, because a situation like what we saw last time, where every person wants to run for our uh, presidency, even those that, it's very clear, cannot be able to win a local government election. So the idea of coming up with the, uh, the, the, you know, the vision that if you've not won any constituent, if you don't have anybody representing the party in any capacity, you know, fielding presidential candidates shouldn't come up. So, but then when you look at the multi-system, what I am thinking is having a situation like what happened in France, you know, uh, Emmanuel Macron did not come from major, major political party, but he collaborated. You have pockets of small, small parties coming up together and dislodging the two major political parties. And that was quite commendable. This is what I am beginning to look at, that the elites should be able to consider those that are going into politics to create a change, to do things unusual from the convention, they should begin to think out of the box. How do we come together? Because you can't just imagine, like, I believe when people study history, then they won't let the history, the negative one, to repeat itself. And when you also study the positive aspect of history, you can let it repeat as many times as you want. So what I mean by that, like, for U.S. that we are modeling after, have any independent candidate ever won an election in the U.S.? The answer, of course, is no. It's oftentimes between the two major political parties. So if somebody is thinking of creating a change by, through the independent candidacy, then, of course, you must begin to understand the, 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 the French model, that of the model of France, how were pockets of small political parties able to come together. And I believe the beauty of independent candidacy, like I rightly pointed out, is that some of those limitations of Party coalitions may not be there. Independent candidates can easily form an alliance and present a, a, a particular candidate. But then another fear also would also be that some hijackers among them could also come to play to ensure that the right persons do not emerge. Now, interestingly, you did make mention of INEC. INEC only recently did an assessment of the existing 92 political parties in Nigeria. And INEC chairman announced that the commission decided to re-register 74 of them and now down to the number of 27 you did mention while you were speaking. Now, does yeah. our multi-party system in the way of, of independent candidacy, does it not get in the way of independent candidacy? Because at the end of the day, we're going to have 
a whole lot of people coming out to vie for positions and, and even for the presidency. Now, doesn't this, in a way, create some kind of chaotic situation for the process, and especially thinking about INEC as it is right now? Yeah, it, it, it does. It does. And honestly, especially like uh, within Nigerian space, where it is obvious that uh, uh, people actually context for elections with the hope that perhaps if I can make some noise, some uh, um, uh, from guys from the medical political party could approach me for settlement. Yeah. And that has not in any way helped our democracy. So it withholds the power of the process. Because what we are talking about here now, we are looking at a solution that will be able to, you know, give people the opportunity to let their, let their will actually be seen in the electoral process. Because at the moment, it does appear People go to the, the ballot to express one thing, and then when the result is out, it's entirely a different process. And then you even have like majority, because if you look at the last election, where you have about 28 million people that went to the polls, that means that over, you know, you have over 100% of that 25, right, of that 28, yeah. you have like twice that number that never even went to the polls. And this might be those that are dissatisfied with the whole process. They probably believe that their, their, their vote and their voice is not going to count. So, but when we begin to like have like systems to enable the right candidates to be fronted before the people, and then also I make reassure people that their vote will actually count. Because the simple truth is that most Nigerians have lost trust in the electoral process. So many people do not go out there to vote. But I want to believe that if you have that silence, majority, the silent majority coming to the polls to weigh in, things are going to change, of course. Now, interesting, you did make mention that many Nigerians have lost confidence in, in, in the ballot process, but it still remains the only credible means in a democracy setting like ours for representatives um, to, to emerge. Now, if the Senate and two-thirds, which is 24 of the 36 state houses of assembly approved the proposal, it will make it legal for independent candidates to vie for any elective office in the country without using any political party platform. Do you think INEC is prepared for this process and the likely chaos that may arise? INEC obviously is not prepared. Uh, judging from the last uh, elections that was coordinated, which of course, uh, when you look at the way that different stakeholders weighed in, uh, the EU, European Union weighed in, and of course uh, you said weighed in, you also have uh, 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 the National Institute of Democracy, you know, and of course, Yaga Africa, assessing this particular election. And it was concluded that this is uh, the worst election ever in, in, in recent uh, history in Nigeria, you know, which of course, INEC and the EPC led, led administration have refused to acknowledge, but it's a fact. It's well known to everyone. So looking at all this, and the fact also, we must not forget that an election that took INEC four years to prepare was just postponed at the eve of the elections. So how can such an NS be prepared for something that is more co complex, like in the, managing the process of independent candidacy, where you can even have up to 100 people vying for a certain position? How will I make really show? And in some cases even, with some, some states, some names of candidates and pictures were removed. And it became an issue of litigation. So how with an NEC like that, how can the NEC prove to us that INEC is actually ready and prepared for such a process? Now, okay, well, let, let's begin to, um, let's talk about alternatives. What, what are the alternatives to us deepening our, our democracy and also creating a level playing field for all Nigerians who want to contribute their quota to the development and growth of our great nation? What are alternatives? Now, the, the, the alternatives, I think uh, the, the civil society really have a great role to play. There is an approach we've always adopted in this country and it has not helped. And that is what I call the fire brigade approach. Now we know that 2023 must come. But nobody, like most of these civil society organizations, many persons have already hibernated, waiting for the eve of the election to start the voter education, to start the voter campaign of don't say your vote, of don't do that and all the rest. But I think if we can start this early enough to educate our people, to reassure them that once you get out there and ensure that you not only vote, but ensure that your vote counts. I'm sure that we begin to reawaken that confidence that people that we collectively have in the electoral process. But when we leave all of the process to politicians, even uh, concluding that the case is dead on arrival, 
I don't think with such kind of attitude we'll be able to, you know, build the democracy that works in our lifetime. So I think all relevant stakeholders, especially civil society, because of course, over the time, politicians has never been, you know, change makers and transformers. When you look at the history of men that built America, they were not all politicians. So I believe technocrats, they'll build an economy, build a nation, and then politicians can now come and do their politics as usual. So I think those of them in the business sector, uh, civil society should be, begin to think ahead. How do we ensure that we don't have a repeat of history? Convener, you decide, or Kenwa Chukuma. It's been a pleasure having you join us on Plus Politics and for your insightful contributions. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you very pleasure. much. And thank you for staying with us. In our next discussion, the House of Representatives once again condemned extrajudicial killings and human rights abuses by security operatives in the country. We will be right back.